Hi everyone and welcome to the actual first official Tailwind Labs interview recording. This is not a live stream, but this is the very first discussion I have, uh, hopefully many more to come. So the guest I have today is Peter Tihi. A couple of weeks ago, Peter did a really nice review of him discovering Tailwind CSS for the very first time. So he hit record and gave himself one hour to discover Tailwind without any prior knowledge of it. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting because he clearly hit a, a hurdle straight away where he didn't want to have to install NPM and post CSS and have Webpack build pipeline to just play with the Tailwind. Of course, a couple of days after his video, we released uh, Tailwind Play, the Tailwind Playground. And I thought that would be a really nice follow up to his video to present him the tool and have him play around with Tailwind with his Hello World without setting uh, any pipeline, which is what he wished for and is now possible. So here it is. Mr. Peter Tichy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for having me. Um, so what I thought we'd do before we get started is just uh, let the audience know who you are, what you do. Uh, we both live in Australia, uh, but we haven't actually met in person, which is kind of funny. But um, I feel like we've known each other for quite a long time. It goes back to all the way when I was learning green seconds, scroll magic animations, and I discovered your really good courses, video courses, and started talking from then on. Why don't you give a brief overview of who Peter is and what he's working on and why he hates tomatoes? <laughs> That's a great question. Everyone asks me for the first time, why do I hate tomatoes? But yes, just to go back to what I'm doing, I'm a front-end developer contractor, freelancer, working sort of for myself. And uh, last few years, I specialized more on the building apps. So not really a website, but the mostly apps. And uh, especially you probably know this, uh, the popular brand in Australia, Kohl's, when you go shopping online at Kohl's. So I was working on the platform or on the, on the, on the framework that actually sits behind it. So I did all the frame, I, I, I did all the templates, all the CSS, and I wish at that time we had something like storybook to maybe create a lot of components and then reuse them. But it was all sort of manually. We kept sort of our own storybook, our own library of components, and uh, then we reused it inside of the Angular app. So that's that's sort of where I specialize. What I like about the front end is to build projects from scratch and usually bigger projects from scratch. So the cause is one of the examples. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy mostly the front end side of things. So no, I'm not a designer, I'm not a back end sort of DevOps guy. I prefer the straight up HTML, CSS, JavaScript and React these days. That's what sort of I focus on. And of course I've heard about Tailwind CSS and uh, I'm trying to learn more about it, how to use it, when to use it and uh, what is what are the main benefits. So I think this discussion, of course, I'll have a lot of questions that hopefully you'll answer that could help some other people trying to pick up Tailwind, uh, Tailwind CSS along the way too. Good stuff. Yeah, the, like you mentioned, the reason I wanted to have you on is a couple of weeks ago, you did this video of you, I think it's an unlisted video, but provided this great feedback for our team where of Peter discovering his first hour with Tailwind CSS. And this in this video, you go through the Tailwind docs as a completely beginner and from a fresh angle, which is really good for us to, to see what the first onboarding experience is. And I think I quote you word that at the very start, it says, just install NPM, Tailwind CSS, post CSS. And your words were, I don't want to install post CSS and NPM. I just want to play with it. And you further discovered that there's different ways uh, you can do this. Uh, there's a CDN link, but it comes with lots of warnings that you shouldn't do it because you lose a lot of nice functionality like customizing colors and purging the unused styles and all that stuff. And so, yeah, and so yeah. that's where I sort of, wanted to pick it up. I wanted to do the first hello world just to see what is it about. And I've heard people saying it's a little bit different way of how you style your things, how you how you turn designs into actual components in a browser. So I wanted to take it for a spin. And yes, I didn't want to invest the time to actually spin up a webpack at the modules and config and everything. So I wanted just, is there a simple way how I can convince myself to invest more time into learning uh, Tailwind CSS. And I think later on, a few days after that, you actually launched the Tailwind plate, right? Yes. So this is it's exactly right. The, at the time when you did the video and asked, there was not really a great way. The, the best way was to have the CDN link, but then you lose all customization and stuff. And 
maybe a week after you you uh, did that video, we uh, launched something called Tailwind Play. What Tailwind Play is, is a way to, in your browser, immediately be able to play with the full features of Tailwind CSS. Uh, you can start using it like if you had installed it with NPM and post CSS and your build step, but it runs in your browser. So you can see there's a HTML, CSS and config file tab. And I think the best way to learn it would be for you to try to play because it's, it's really... Uh, Improving on everything you, you wished you had in the onboarding experience, your feedback was like, I wish I could just hello world and play with it. And this is exactly what it is. Okay, perfect. So do you want me to share my screen now? Yeah. So we have a scene set up where we can see your screen. So now we're on Peter's computer. So of course, you've got the, here a default markup with a lot of classes. But let's say that I have my own design. And let's even simplify to what you've got here. If I want to bring in one of these cards from Figma design, if, if I can zoom in, that's nice because there is the Tailwind logo. Otherwise, it wouldn't be as nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's 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 firstly just explain me and let's delete this one. How would I do simple three layout, three column layout? Of course, I've got a three columns, maybe four columns later. So how does Tailwind CSS and how inside of this playground I can play just with layout? Forget about the details of the card itself, but how do I lay out three things next to each other or four things and make yeah. them responsive and stuff like that? I think this, this discussion is going to be interesting because it's going to be more uh, about CSS itself uh, than you think because Tailwind essentially maps a lot of CSS properties to utility classes. Um, so we can look at the config file and stuff later, but uh, the way you would lay out something like this if you know CSS and what it can do, is probably use a CSS grid or Flexbox to make multiple columns. So if I bring in, a, I've got a little HTML prepared. It's much simpler than what yes. I had in the design, right? But I've got a container with cards and then I've got one card in it. So let's, uh, oops. Yeah, I would, I would triplicate that uh, card snippet. Yeah. Okay, so I've got three cards there. Yeah. So what would be the stuff that I need to add to the container, to the card itself, to see them side by side yeah. and maybe make it max width of 1280 or whatever that is, some sort of cap, cap the width of the container. Yeah, sure. So I think we'll, we'll start, uh, what I would do first is remove these cards and cards uh, classes, which is the traditional, no, you can keep class, but remove just the class name. So that would be the traditional way of doing CSS is you have a, a CSS class name and then you you apply styles to this, uh, but I would just go keep the HTML without any of the actual classes applied so we can do everything okay. with Tailwind. I mean, it's quite obvious that it doesn't apply any styles, but yep. you okay, get the I'm idea. Instead reply. of having yep. your CSS living somewhere else, and then you have to map your HTML to the CSS and jump between the two files, we're going to switch to a workflow of never leaving the HTML file. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the first thing I would do is my top top div here it's going to be our grid container so i would give a class of grid and if you type just g you should start seeing uh, all the different utilities that so that's one of the cool things with the with the tailwind uh, play is you get this nice autocomplete which is a great documentation so grid is uh, telling this is a grid parent and then you can add another class which would be uh, in still in there uh, to tell we want three columns, you're going to go grid dash calls. So for columns, C O L S. And there you go. Okay. So if I go if inspect it now, I will see, of course, the CSS applied yeah, to these containers, right? So yeah. there is still grid template columns that is generated inside of the CSS. So underlying under Tailwind CSS is still the pure CSS as, as we know it. Yes. It's just okay. a different way of instead of having a class called card and have six different declarations in there, uh, you move that to the HTML and you compose the different uh, CSS properties with the utilities. So here you applied a display grid to the parent and then a grid, I don't know exactly the, the, the syntax. Like you, you've yeah, it is a grid, grid template column and yeah. then it's repeat three times because of, of course it's three and then there's a minimax zero comma one fragment. So yeah. That's where it defines the minimum and maximum. Nice. So that's, that's essentially 
all you would have to do. Uh, what I suggest you do is, if you look on the top right of your UI, uh, next to the moon, which is the dark mode toggle, there's the responsive thing, and now you can play with the, the width. And mm -hmm. as you can mm -hmm. see, it's always three columns now. And one yep. of the best features of Tailwind CSS is how easy it is to do responsive stuff. So everything is by default mobile first. So now we've said grid calls three, and it's three columns from the ground up. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you go, if you add, uh, let's say MD before MD column, and uh, yeah, so now you've added the medium breakpoint prefix, and you can see it will only jump if you go bigger than this. It'll jump to three columns at the medium point. Okay, so it's mobile first. It's built with mobile first. So anything not not prepended with any of these MD or I guess you have small as well and XL or large or yep, what are the it. other extensions? Yes, so you everything applies to everything by default, and then if you go SM, it's from small and up. MD is medium and up, etc. And I like that you already it's... you haven't really used Tailwind, and you're already figuring out uh, through the autocomplete. Yep. So that's four on the larger breakpoint, and then the medium is three, yep. and then on the on the mobile first we have only one. So that's that's good. I think that's that's quite. Of course, that looks simple, and. Uh, where, where do where can I find these sort of prefix? If I don't know, if I wouldn't know what MD or large is or small, where is there is there is there a docs that so that would still I can be go the, to one page with a list of all the classes that are coming by default? Yeah. So my preferred way of navigating it, for now, I, I use the search at the top, and I would just type responsive or breakpoints, and you you would find. So it's using Algolia search. Okay. Cool. So, so here it, it shows the default small, uh, yeah. medium, large, and extra large is defined. So these are the pixel values that the layout changes. Okay, so anything prepended with the MD or LG will change to it. So, okay, but the, the, the breakpoint or the responsiveness of it comes to mobile first, then you overwrite the value to be bigger on the medium breakpoints, and then you again overwrite it on the larger breakpoints. Yeah. Okay. So cool. one so thing I would do next is just uh, as a as a hello world, or I would add some background to the three, and that's when you might wish you had a templating language because we're gonna repeat three times, but it's not a big deal. I would add like a, a background color to each of the three cards, and then we can see how the gap, uh, the grid gap utility gets applied. So can I in this playground give the whole peg, whole page maybe a gray background, so and they keep the card white, card cards white? If I jump and take the light gray. How do I apply it here? Give it to the whole page. Well, I would I would wrap all of it in an extra div. Or there's nothing okay. wrong with putting your background on your grid. It's it's gonna work as well. So we'd yep. go BG for background, and then you will have a million colors to choose from. BG dash million. Not a million, but a lot. <laughs> like like scroll down, and you will see. Okay, so I'll and maybe go you can use the arrow to gray. preview it. And if you use the arrow, um, you will have a nice uh, like discovery of what you want to use but you kind of oh, know already you want this yeah yes okay all right and my 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 thinking was if i want to give it to the whole page not just the you see how it doesn't stretch all oh, the yeah. way to the background that's why i wanted to yeah. give so it to the you, body you so could have like a, a h screen class which is like a hundred percent viewport height or there's a different like again it's like css i think even in normal uh, if you write CSS, if the HTML, like you have to say body, HTML, whatever, like mean, mean yeah. height, 100 VH. Okay. So you would compose this again with the... Um, so maybe maybe then it's worth wrapping it in an extra div. So this div declares the, the background and then okay. it doesn't mix up with your grid declaration. So just wrap the whole uh, thing in a div, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we should now have everything wrapped in it. Oops. Yes, I can. So I've got a background on the container itself. And yep. uh, what what are the classes? Did you say to stretch it all the way to take the hundred percent of the viewport height? Well, there's there's height hundred percent. There's h screen, which is hundred vh. So no, it's just h. Sorry, just the letter h dash. And then I would try the screen one, which is 100% viewport. There you go. And then if you know Flexbox well enough, if you want to center your stuff, you know 
uh, you could do like uh, declare that wrapper as a flex container and then do align align items and justify content center. Okay, so again, there needs to be. So if I know flexbox, mm -hmm. how do I relate that to the classes? Well, you Is think it, in your in your head you're gonna think if I want to center these cards, I probably have to have a flex wrapper and then yep. uh, align items and justify content center. So yep. the first thing you would add the class called flex, try to discover if that exists and surprise, surprise, it does. There you go. All right. So yes, but my question is if I, of course, I, I knew these Flexbox classes, but is there a reference that like, I like these sort of media queries, uh, yeah, yeah. you know. So I again, for I would search for flex. So would we search? Yeah, I, I, you can press the, the slash or command K like in Slack or to, to search for stuff. And I would just, that's how you discover the different. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to sort of see yeah. where if, if I get lost or if I don't know, then I think some people, yes, after a while you're comfortable with using this auto completion, but if you maybe not too familiar with it, you, you, yes. you still want to refer, refer it somewhere. And I think this, this is great, great sort yeah. of pointer to, to come to here. Okay. I don't want to over index on the docs because they're going to change in about six weeks. Uh, yeah. But this, yeah, there's, there's a learning curve where you, you're trying to figure out how classes are named. But what I was trying to infer is if, if you know flex is the right uh, uh, tool for the job, chances are if you type flex, it's a class that's called like this. So the Tailwind has a really intuitive naming convention. Mm -hmm. Just grid is grid, flex is flex, background is beat. Sometimes we don't have the full name, but it's... Uh, yeah, and then this autocomplete stuff is, to me, trumps any... This, the, the, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, <laughs> documentation, because it's like auto-documents uh, what's yeah, available. You so you mm -hmm. get a flex wrapper now, and then you can add... Uh, but, well, try. You want to justify centers. If you try to type justify, you're like, hey, all the classes are here. So justify-center. So that's the the first axis and then the second axis is align items so i think it's items center there you go item center should put it vertically nice all right that centers it vertically on the page yes yes, yes. so like you said I, the, okay. when you're discovering uh, tailwind from the ground up you can't probably guess that it's item center and that's when you go to the docs but mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. from from experience of me and lots of people i've talked to uh, you you live in the docs the first few two three days and then you start to intuitively guess uh, what the classes are going to be called yep 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 i'm sure it is intuitive i'm just as i said i'm, I'm very raw to it so i'm sort of uh, walking through it as, as i'm sure thousands of people will after this video <laughs> but it's it's great keep keep uh, challenging that and asking questions because I, I i come from like i've been using it since the beginning and for me, it's like, oh, just, just, you should know that it's called like this and it's not true. So it's nice to see your, your fresh eyes mm -hmm. uh, coming. Just another it. question on this sure. one. So let's say someone is completely new to styling, styling in general, CSS yes. layouts and positioning and flex and grid. Doesn't really matter what it is. Some people maybe not even know how to position things on the element. What are all the options? And they would search css positioning and they would end up at uh, css tricks, tricks. <laughs> with uh, with uh, flexbox uh, guide and stuff like that and then yep. they would try to sort of replicate it within within tailwind so my question is do you think tailwind is even for someone who is completely new to css or is it for someone and don't don't tell me it's for both <laughs> but I'm, I'm just trying to get the idea of do, do people who picking Tailwind CSS, should they already know the pure CSS? So my answer is going to be yes, they should to a certain extent. If you know nothing about CSS, you're going to install Tailwind and be like squinting like, now what? What do I do? Like, where's my card? Where's my flex three column layout we just started doing? It's not there. There's nothing like this. I'd say you need the basics of layouts, flex, grids, uh, like position, absolute, relative, all the, the stuff that is quite hard and you need to learn in CSS. Yep. And then you can that, discover... That answers yeah. the questions, yeah, because yep. I, I was, uh, you know, if, if I was introducing or if someone asked me, should I learn Tailwind CSS before I learn CSS? Yep. I think this answers the question. I think people 
need to understand first the layout, the basics of CSS, and not not even the basic. I think you should you should really know your CSS as as the raw thing because yeah. maybe not not every project will have Tailwind CSS, and then if you land just that, you might be lost in other projects. So I think, but yeah, I think the better you get at CSS. Setup the better you get at Tailwind. And it's not the other way around. You can kind of learn CSS through Tailwind because of if you hover over any class, uh, I even didn't mention that, if you in your playground here, it tells you what, what is uh, the CSS that's implemented. Mm -hmm. So you might mm -hmm. get used mm -hmm. to these classes and not really know what they do. And then, oh, he did, that's how a custom property works with the opacity and stuff like this. You can learn mm -hmm. your way into advanced stuff by using Tailwind. But you definitely okay. need a a good understanding before it's it's not going to replace bootstrap where you can use bootstrap and use the default design components without knowing what they do at all mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cool i think that's good so we've got these lined up and then if we want to add the space that would be uh, this is the grid so is there a space is it uh... so the the because it's we in grid here uh, grid has that gap property that Flexbox is about to have. Uh, so you can try gap and see what happens. Ooh. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I wanted to have. Yeah, so that adds gap between the individual grip, grid items, I guess. Yep. And cool. it's worth noting that we, we're doing just a horizontal row here. So we, But when you use grid, you can define grid uh, columns, grid rows, and then the gap can be different on the x-axis or y-axis as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, cool. your question was, how do I do three cards center aligned on a gray background? And that's kind of, it doesn't yep. look the same for now, but we're getting there. Yep, perfect. As I said, this is the ideal scenario, three centered cards yep. in the middle. So yeah, let's stick to that plan. And uh, so if I want to add white background to each of them, nice. so let's, yep. let's, let's do it on one. And I guess that would be BG... Yeah, I think for now we could uh, focus on the first one and then copy and paste three times. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. This is so, typically where you would use like a templating language and then for each card in cards. Uh, yeah. So you I, I I get that. So yeah, don't don't worry about these two. But let's make the first one look really really good. Make yes. it wor wor world class world class card. <laughs> so background. If we want to add some padding, some padding around the edges. Then now I'm going to stop can. talking and see you discover the class names because you get the hang of it fairly quickly. Okay, so P, I think I played with uh, padding last time. So P, this was, yes, that was P5 and so on. So this is paragraph to something or padding something. So this will just increase the padding. That's cool. And what 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 does it, again, I can actually look behind the scene. Adding 1.25. Okay, if, of course, I can visually sort of build it up like this, but if I have to be precise to yes. what the designer created, then where do I define what P5 stands for and how do I override it? That would be my sort of question. I know it yes. comes with some sort of grid by default or spacing by default, but every project is different unless we all use the default Tailwind CSS, then we will all look the same. So yep. where do I Excellent customize question. this padding? Uh, on to be my own or whatever yeah. the design team that I'm working with suggested. So I think the, the first thing to do is to understand how, where these values come from, like you said. So maybe in the Tailwind docs, if you search for padding or spacing, uh, you will understand. Um, so you, you should have somewhere like a list of uh, possible values, but always, always, always at the bottom of each uh, CSS property, it tells you how to customize. Um, see here, okay, so you scroll up just a little bit more. There you go. So you get your padding scales, and it tells you that it uh, appears in the theme dot spacing key. So whenever mm -hmm. you hear theme, it's it's the concept of config file which is a JavaScript object where you define lots of values. And then this will generate all the CSS classes for you. And that's where post CSS comes into play. So okay. Tailwind has that really cool way of thinking where instead of writing CSS for each different uh, values, you predefine your, your values, your restrict, restricted set of choices ahead of time. 
and then you define them in a JS object. And then it's going to generate the spacing for margin and padding and padding left and right and top and bottom and the stuff that would take you forever to do manually. So, okay, so if, if, we, if we take this example, yes. team spacing small eight pixels, does it mean on a sm small breakpoint, uh, padding one will be eight pixels? No, no, that's not what it means. This one replaces the the default scale, which is one, two, three, four, eight, twelve, whatever, and it it says I don't want any of that. I want small, medium, large, and extra large. So okay. this completely can I, can I take it for a spin? Yeah. Okay, and so it, I'm copying will terms of team spacing. So you will go, it break? It will break what you have because you will remove the p dash ten or whatever you use, but it's fine. That's what we want. So okay, so let's 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 remove it so we don't break it. Okay, and I'll so go in to the config, config file. Um, so you see, you have your theme key, and you probably just want the spacing uh, object in there. Yeah, so but I'll just worth uh, worth mentioning, you also have the autocomplete for everything in there. So if inside the theme object you start typing uh, letter S, it should say, "Hey, I, I guess Clippy will come and say, are you are you trying to change the spacing?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this seven, what does this seven relate to? Okay, uh, there's something I want you to realize here. Can you see how spacing is wrapped in an extend key? Yes, mm -hmm, that one. Mm -hmm. So if you apply spacing directly inside theme, it's going to override everything for spacing. And if you put it in the extend, it says keep every of the base values and then extend it with my value seven. So. Tailwind out of the box doesn't, it, it goes one, two, three, four, I'm not sure, but then it goes to six, eight, it starts keeping bits. It's not from one to 99 every single value. So mm -hmm. here, this example adds a P-7 uh, or margin MT7, which would be 1.75 rems, which is mm -hmm. not part of the default config. So it extends. Okay. But so inside, yeah, so, inside so, so I, if, I, if I would take yeah. this, just a small one, small yes. eight, right? What I would so do is add I it to the extend. Yep. Yes, that's it. And now if you go back to the HTML, you should have all the spacing, like padding and margin would have a M-SM or P-SM. And it should be already in the autocomplete. Look at this. Okay. It, it generated all this left, top, X, Y. Okay, that's cool. And, and if, if you I inspect, inspect that, it, it's going to be the value that was defined. Yeah. Here. Is my, my, my X inspector is not showing up, is it? I'm just sharing the, the window, right? We just see that you're selecting okay. stuff, but we don't see the DevTools. All right. Okay. So just in the DevTools, so someone watching that in the DevTools, there is a class applied to it, P-SM, and that transfers to padding 8 pixels. So I think that's the same thing as if I show the hover state here. Yeah, that's yeah. the same thing. That's what shows in there. Okay. So yeah, perfect. That's I think that's another discovery for me. Yep. how I can customize it and make it uh, make it our own. And you said theme extend spacing will just add and keep all the other default ones in there for me. So yep. I didn't lose any of the default ones, but I've added one small value or I can call this whatever I want, I guess. Yeah, that's that's going to be the, the name of the class name that you decide. So it's going to okay. take P for padding and then dash and whatever, if you say, call it tomato or Peter or something, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have P dash Peter, eight pixels. Okay, good. No, I like it. I like that. That's, that's yeah. a great thing. But it's, uh, it's nice that you, because a lot of people get tripped up on, they just put the spacing or whatever customization straight in theme. And then they're like, oh, I've lost every other value. What have I done? And okay, so can can you reiterate what is the what is the difference between so this one just extends it yeah. keeps my own thing on top of the yeah. default built-in values. Yes. And if I put it on in theme dot or just theme directly dot in the spacing, theme, yeah. Yeah. then it would just keep that. Okay, so what if we try it? Yeah. So if I put it directly in here, oops, no, they have to be spacing, right? Yeah. Spacing. And it's an you open an object, yeah. And then you can paste this in. Then I have only the SM available, nothing else. Well, because you extend it as well, I think you're gonna have the seven as well. But you lose okay. every. So go try auto complete, see what you have left, and you should have yeah, just seven and small. You have uh, 
removed the generation of all the other spacing classes, which is actually they are the by far the most used uh, utilities in Tailwind. Uh, someone came up with a graphic that shows the usage of different Tailwind classes in the world, and margin and padding is like the vast vast domination <laughs> okay so, so, so for anyone them. watching do not do this do not put <laughs> spacing directly in the theme always just yeah. extend it if you need it but i, I guess the yeah. default built-in is quite flexible anyway isn't it well it's it's very well thought and there's a lot of design thinking and experiments uh, behind the scenes but it, it allows like, if someone has a very rigid design system and set of uh, colors and spacing and they're like i want my stuff nothing else you just put it straight into the theme key and off you go. You've got your completely custom uh, config file that erases everything by default. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect. So I've got uh, some spacing. Let's say this is fine. Let's don't go too overboard with the with trying to be precise with here, but let's add the borders, border radius. So I guess that would be BR or border, border somewhere must be border radius. I'm trying to let you struggle. No, oh, please tell me border radius. Uh, round it, round it. There was something with rounded, right? Round it, round it, the radius. Okay, so that's rounded, the default one. Not any extension, but it was a rounded, small, medium, large. Does it make more or less? Of course it does. So small is less, small is border radius 1.27 RAM and large LG. By the way, as you as you go up and down yeah. with the arrows, I don't know if you've noticed, but it shows you the value. Like if you if you remove that and Is start it? typing, you you go up and down, it shows in the preview, but you can also I see see border top left right. Oh you have to hover over yeah. it probably because it's too short. Yeah I would like to see the whole thing in this Maybe. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's better. And then so once now, you've got this thing open, you can go up and down and you see the whole thing. There. That's perfect. So I think this this is what I was looking after because or looking for because without it I, I went always back, deleted the class. It sort of felt a little bit clunky, but this is good that I can actually see it exactly here. Perfect. So I've got let's say let's say give it give it the large one, give it give it a little bit more. And it's perfect. So we've got rounded corners. What about drop shadows? I think we had yeah. some some sort of drop shadows at the top, just drop shadows. So would that be shadows or draw? Oh, yeah, shadows. So we're getting rid of the drop or box. I like that because in CSS, sometimes it's box shadows, drop shadows, or text shadow, yeah, yeah. yeah, text shadow. So shadow is fine. And shadow, I see a little bit at the bottom. So, again. Yeah. If I wanted to customize it and make the mm -hmm. make the shadows pink, I would have to go to the config yep. and extend the shadow, I guess, would be. Shadow. Try shadow, box shadow. Like the autocomplete will tell you when you hit the will it? Oops, shadow. Oops, uh, and shadow. if you if you can't find it, you go in the documentation. And I mean I work at Tailwind Labs and I've been using Tailwind forever and I still uh, hit these problems where, and I'm sure Adam <laughs> looks at the docs as well every now and then. Okay, uh, so, so you go. Box, this is a box shadow? Yeah, so box shadow is the object in the config file that you customize. That it didn't show as a auto completion. And yeah. a box shadow, you see? What are we doing wrong? Shadow doesn't comply after that. So now you're in extend, so you can add a value without deleting any of the existing ones. Yeah. So let's go back. Take this value. So would you take the whole CSS value as you would normally apply? And that's what you would put in. And just make it, make it really black, right? So be that. Do I then have access to box shadow or shadow hyphen shadow test test okay so there it is there is my beautiful shadow dark, beautiful <laughs> 80, subtle. <laughs> 80 subtle subtle drop shadow so that, this that's is fantastic the, this is the classic shadows that people me included when you start design you you want a shadow and you because you really want to see it and you make it like this and then you realize it's 
way over the top but when you begin yeah. design like you see people doing these flyers for schools and they have these massive drop shadows yeah this is a my, my space in the early <laughs> 90s <laughs> exactly right okay so shadows is here and again i just went to the theme extend added my own value if if the design comes with something else than the yep. default ones then i can put it here change the color change essentially yeah. anything you would ever write in the box shadow property so anything that is valid css property you can customize that and get the class generated based on the on the on the on the prefix that you essentially here you you adding the it's not a prefix it's a suffix right so box shadow or suffix, shadow yeah. hyphen test then results into yes. box shadow with this okay but you you start to see the the paradigm shift from writing css classes to no no what what we care about is the design tokens or values and then i want to let the system generate all the utilities based on the name i've chosen and mm -hmm. it also mm -hmm. generated the uh, sm uh, shadow test and lg shadow test so you can have responsive uh, you can have that super big shadow only on large breakpoints i added extra space that breaks it but i like how it gives me the auto completion yeah. saying that there's something wrong with it which is perfect so if I fix that, then we have nothing on the medium breakpoint. And if I go to the small default one, we have the yep. MySpace coming back, which is good. Okay, so if I wanted to add a little bit of, let's say, I'll just grab a pink color. What if what if I want to have a mobile just mm -hmm. with pink? So I want to change this to be uh, pinkish like this. I'm just going to copy the... CSS for it, and that's just for I was the like, mobile, which, right? Which utility did you use? Uh, I don't know that one, and then I realized you're in DevTools doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, DevTools just sort of changing in color. So I want to keep it as it is. So that's yeah. that's fine. But on the on on the mobile only. So on the small breakpoint. Why can I not copy that? Was in that. So, so again, small and then shadow. Mm -hmm. Shadow test. Can I override just? Can I have my own custom saying? Can I have this different on a smaller breakpoint and larger breakpoints or not? No. So what I you would do is define next, two next of one? them. You would define two different values and then uh, toggle them with the breakpoints. Yeah, so this would be like that. I would just have to put a different color here. I mean, you can write any CSS you want in Tailwind. You can you can write really really advanced CSS, and we can talk about it later. But if you do it in the config, you you have to to forget the. You, it's really like little tokens you compose together. And yeah. so if I go on small, should that show my shadow pink, or is this overwriting it? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show between small and medium. So it's going to be uh, test at the start and then pink. It doesn't. It the, the, the problem is probably there's an the issue value. because I'm missing comma uh, inside yeah. of here. So I don't know why I copied it from uh, the... Yes, here it is. Okay, so it was my yeah. my bad copy-paste. Copy-paste. Okay, so it was wrong already. So if I put the back again, the MD shadow test would be on the larger breakpoints it should show that. yeah so now you get pink in between the mobile uh, yeah yeah okay that's purely mobile first then it goes to small breakpoint which is defined somewhere as the 640 or something and then that turns into pink because of this class and then anything above that goes back to this class yeah. which is defined the dark black background okay you you reapply the test that you had removed yeah Okay, cool. And if I look at the CSS, just so I'm, I validate it for myself. Sure. Everything is, oops, where is the class? Here it is. And inside of the DevTools, it's it's sort of, it's the default overwriting cascading CSS. So yes. it overrides the, the, the thing defined in the previous breakpoint. Yeah, okay. so that cool. it's still, uh, I mean, it's still CSS under the hood. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. this playground makes it feel magic because you just define stuff in the config file and then it's there. But 
what it's done is it's rerun the whole thing through post CSS and generated a new style sheet and then uses that with the new values and autocomplete picks them up. So let's leave that as small. And did I zoom in? No, it just it zooms out because I resized. Okay. Yeah. It's so nothing we, to do. We've it's just because, because I have the responsiveness on. Yeah. Sometimes you want to preview a wide breakpoint, but you don't have space on your screen, so you can over scroll, I guess. But yeah, okay. let's look at it like this for the rest of the design because it's probably easy uh, or nice. Easier. Yep. Yes. Okay. So what's the so, next step? Next step would be maybe break it down into the three sort of spaces. So the image yes. at the top, then uh, this little bit floating in the middle and yep. this floating at the bottom. So again, what would be, this is the image. And so if I want to flex this as a column or flex direction, it'd be a flex. Yeah, so the flex is its own class to define flex and then the flex call. Yep. Cool. And then so I've got a, I've got it everything. Of course, it's 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 by default that way. But I think it would make the columns if if there was more text in this column, everything would sort of expand, and the card would always align, right? So that's yeah. that's what we want. Okay. Cool. Then, if I want, is this one title? This one thing should be should this be one title one thing? Title it's up to you. Like, general today. If I look at it, they. This is one. Th oops. This is one thing. This is one thing. So let's keep yeah. it. Two ah, you mean for things. the for the flex wrappers? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. 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 Okay. So if I give this margin, so if I want margin bottom, is it M B or yes M B yeah. something? Okay. Cool. Yes. On the title, I want I want to make the title different font. So let's let's look at font, font sizes and stuff. So mm -hmm. if let's say this is H one, this should be H one. Yes, maybe H two. H two probably. More content. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You have more cards. H two. And how do I define font size? So do I do I is is there so that's one where you will probably struggle because it's actually called uh, you found it text yeah okay. so you got text so if i go to my design yes, so let's be this precise. to be okay it's 28 pixels over here and how do i text compare that to your values 28 pixels is, I mean, 32 is two rems, so it's probably 1.75 rems, which is uh, the oh, next man. one, three XL maybe. What does it give you? Ah, it's just gonna okay, be a bit so too okay. big, but that's it's okay. That's good okay. Enough. We can live with it today. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, coming with some default font style as well, or font family. How do I define or change font family? Is it also in the text, or is it? Yes, but this uh, it starts with font dash. Okay. So if I don't have this one is open yeah. sans. This one is open sans, and is 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 open sans here or not? So you can see the default is like the system UI uh, font, and then there's default ones. But again, you can uh, extend the config file to add uh, font open or font brands or font whatever. All right, so I would define my own one in the config or extend it. That would give me a class font yep, open like, that would then result in that font being yes. applied to this element. Just like everything else in Tailwind, you extend the, the config values and then it generates classes for you. Okay, okay. So I think I think we, we're sort of going over the same thing now. Like I, I would go through the rest of the, the cards to obviously yeah. get it over <laughs> there. Let's Let's do one more thing. So at the bottom... We have two again, two sort of grids or two things side by yeah. side and a border top. So let's let's try to do this little bit. Could I just show you one side. little thing before we do that? Yep. Uh, if you if you look at the your design, there's similar spacing between the logo and then the text and then the button. Mm -hmm. And what you had started doing in the HTML is apply margin bottom to each. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very common case where you have every element inside a container that have the same spacing except the first or the last one. 
-hmm. And for a situation like this, there's a really cool layout utility called, it's kind of like space between, it it's handles it from the parent level. So if you go to the div that wraps the this one, yeah, you can go um, space uh, dash y for the y axis. And then you can see that it's going to apply the same spacing between each of the children element. Okay. okay. So that's okay. super useful when you have a list of things with the same spacing, uh, like a navigation or uh, it, it happens actually quite often. And it's nice to be able to give the responsibility of that to the parents. And then each mm -hmm. child technically shouldn't know how to position itself from the parents. That's the, the layout concern is for the parent element. Okay. So I just so thought I'd show you that. Result? Yeah, that's perfect. What does this result into? Like if I hover over it? The the IntelliSense thing is having a struggle because it's uh, probably one of the most complex classes in Tailwind. There's quite a bit of uh, of trickery. Basically, it applies the spacing on the top element except the first one. Perfect. So I think, yes, this one probably has a little bit more CSS behind it. That's why it doesn't show in the preview here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's great, great to know that you can apply consistent spacing between elements. Inside That's of one of the first thing people say, hey, I have a, an ordered list with 17 items and I need to put the spacing in each of the 17 children. And mm -hmm. arguably it sucks. And so this allows you to do it from the parent, which is very nice. Okay, cool. So this this CSS or this HTML is not really 100%. As I said, I just did it quickly before the yeah. demo. So if if I have I have a board at top, so let's, let's make a, one contain. Let's strip this down. I'll just keep the image for later later and we just want to have the top so border or border full border or the top how do i define border just top border yeah. oh you got it so you define the border that you're triggering or targeting first and uh Potentially the width as well, the default is just one pixel, but you have zero, two, four. So just border so T, will, border T, it will pixel? do nothing by itself, but it will say whatever color you choose next is going to apply that to the border top for one pixel. Oh, okay, so I need the border T to get one pixel border top, and now I need to define border color yes. to be uh, is it border C or border, where is the border color? Is it? We just go border and then border dash and then the a color like gray 400 or okay. pink. That's it. All right. That's why it's just one pixel. All right. And then the, of course, if I'm saying the gray already. So let's get to the nice and so 200. Not that we did with the box shadows uh, overdid it. So that's okay. I need to define this before it changes. Otherwise, the T, what was it? Two pixels. It was. T2 to get a two pixels, okay. Yeah. And then still it overrides or adds this color to it. Alrighty, that's cool. So let's keep it T by default for the one pixel. Mm -hmm. And then I have two things side by side in it. So we would have two different containers. And one would be on the left text on the right. So. Essentially, you, you are, yeah, as you as you said at the start, now I see how I'm not leaving HTML elements or HTML mm -hmm. HTML page by styling. Usually you're switching between two two documents. You, you're writing CSS in, in one and then HTML in another one. So you're definitely switching or you have both open at the same time. And yeah. here it is, you, you're just doing it in one document, which of course it takes a little bit of little bit of practice and so at the start i guess everyone is a little bit slower in tailwind course, css yeah. before they pick it yeah. up but then the 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 biggest selling point for future is it the scalability right the extensibility and that it strips out all the unused css yeah and you've removed two things from your workflow the first is switching between css html scrolling up and down finding the spot but uh, arguably stronger you've removed the need to name anything because the utilities are already named for you so you're like mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. card wrapper or card container or card box thing dash dash and you know like you start creating these weird naming conventions uh yeah this goes out of the way completely because you just apply the existing classes 
Okay, cool. So I think I think we've covered quite a lot in terms of the the generic styles and and yep. expanding some of the the different or default paddings and and you showed me how to do the custom font sizes. What else is in this playground that people can play with? And you know, maybe someone who's already a little bit more advanced with with Tailwinds. What else can they do here in the CSS? Can they? I don't even know what utilities are. Yeah plugins and stuff like that. So maybe just run me over, maybe share your screen and run me over what what else can they use yep. inside of Stellwind CSS uh, playground. Good. All right, so I'll switch back to uh, my screen. Play. So you mentioned this, what are these Tailwind base components? Uh, Tailwind has three main uh, layers, what it's called. Base is... Uh, mostly like normalize resets and we do a few more opinionated things to to reset everything to base styles that look exactly the same in in like each browser but you can think of like resetting the margins and the the colors and font size and stuff like this components mm -hmm. is what i want to say uh most advanced uh, no i don't want to make assumptions i never use components i i much prefer moving to a templating language and have uh, a card that has the utility classes instead of creating uh, like a card CSS component. But there's a layer for this which lets you abstract uh, CSS components and its purpose is to be just before utilities. So if you create a card component, it's going to be overridable by the utility classes. Where if you had if you had that component below, uh, it would not, you couldn't like change the background color of one of the cards with utilities because of the cascade and uh, specificity. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of uh, Tailwind uh, happens in uh, the utilities. Uh, maybe I can show you one little quick thing that's pretty cool. Like we've seen already how to extend different things, but I think the colors are quite interesting because that's one of the... That's one of the first things that people want to customize, right? Let's say I want to have a class called I hate. I've already guessed uh, what the color will be. Um, yeah. Tomato. It's a JavaScript, so it's a string. There you go. So now by just adding, extending a color called I hate, which resolves to tomato, uh, mm -hmm. if I go in any, I can go in here. Um, I hate. So you can see it generated uh, background colors, border colors, text colors, placeholder colors, divide oh, colors. Right, right, right. So you can also use it inside of the, I see you've got the uh, from and to, which is used yep. for gradients so let's and go, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> let's go replace our from teal here with from I hate, uh, which is going to look pretty weird, but <laughs> there you go. So now we got okay. our CSS tomato color that is That's used beautiful. as the from value of the gradient. Okay, that's perfect. So just by extending that, one, by just putting that one property inside of the config, you generate a lot of extra classes that you can then quickly reuse inside of your macro. Yeah. So I think that's definitely saves a lot of time than generating a lot of that. So that's, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, we saw the example with padding at the start, but I thought colors is one of the most expressive one because it generates backgrounds and borders and like there's a lot of different colors. And doing it by hand, uh, going to add all these CSS utilities would be absolute uh, madness. So, yeah. Uh, and Perfect. typically, you could not do any of that without installing PostCSS and Node and uh, being able to do it straight up there in the config file and then prototype. So, say in your design, the button color is a specific color. You just add it to the color scale. And mm -hmm. then you can have the design that matches exactly what you need. Uh, okay. Still prototyping in the browser, which is very cool. Good. So for, as I said, this is perfect second hour with Tailwind CSS for me. Mm -hmm. If we would wrap it up with what is the next thing, if I decided, okay, let's, I've got some project running on my local. I want to give Tailwind CSS a go. Where is the guide or, or link to the documentation, how to install it inside of a React app or Next.js app? Where is the, where can we send people after watching this? Hey, if you want to take it to the next step, Yep. and install it on your own project where it is. So if we can sort of give people call to action, if they enjoy this and if they enjoy Tailwind in CSS, Tailwind CSS in general, where they can yep. go to actually ins install it. <laughs> so I did not pay you to say that. Uh, it's funny you ask because the, we just started a new work cycle at Tailwind this week. 
And my job is to create uh, lots of setup guides with Next and Nuxt and Laravel and Craft CMS and like what have you to improve this uh, user journey. Currently, uh, if I go back to the, the doc site, there's this get started button right at the top. And it tells you the step that you would do if you are going to like dev locally on your project instead of the, the Tailwind playground. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you can see that it involves the creating a config file, which we already uh, had done yep. here nicely for us with a few custom mm -hmm. extend. But the default uh, Tailwind doc would look something like this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can you have to set up post CSS, which is where beginners there's a lot of friction here because it's like oh what is post CSS I'm scared of it and it's not you just have to define which plugin it should run through which is not uh, super hard to set up but it adds a lot of uh, friction to the hello world I guess. Okay, so just if there's someone completely new to this, post CSS is a plugin that runs in the build time build process where it takes the CSS and can strip out the different things from the CSS can add uh, prefixes so it covers all of the all the browsers so it's 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 a step in the build process that yes. it takes the CSS and modifies it in some way and in this config you can just define what should happen to the CSS exactly yeah it's uh, okay. there's preprocessors like sass and less that uh, have a syntax and then, then generate CSS and post CSS will take the CSS and then process stuff on top of it. A lot of people do not know, but they use it because they run auto prefixer to add prefix vendor prefixes to their CSS. And that's an auto prefixer plugin. Uh, that's yep. a post CSS plugin. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So you can see we have examples of how to do it with Webpack or Gulp or Laravel Mix or all of these different tools. But there's still a uh, lot of the questions I answer daily on the GitHub issues and discussions is, hey, how do I set up a Tailwind with Gatsby or with this and that? And so we're going to work on a series of little setup guides that will have hopefully a code example and then a nicely simple step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial. And maybe even if we have time, a little video that just runs through the process. Perfect. That's a great, uh, great, uh, great way to onboard people from different different sort of backgrounds, different platforms, Gatsby, Next.js, Create React App. You know, if you have a lot of these guys, then the entry point will be much smoother. All right, thanks for, thanks for showing me around the Tailwind CSS Playground. It's been, it's been a pleasure. As I said, I'm starting up with it. I'm starting to like it. And of course, I need to play with it a little bit more before I take it and put it on a big project. And just maybe one question before we sure. wrap it up. How hard it is to put... Tailwind CSS into an existing project that maybe is going around for a year and a half or two mm -hmm. and has already a decent CSS code base, quite a lot of components. Is it something that could be quite hard and tedious or is it something that you can incrementally add and maybe new components just use Tailwind CSS? What, what is your take on this? Uh, I have a pretty strong take because my, my whole journey into utility for CSS was refactoring uh, a BEM methodology site that I built, and I, I think it was built quite well, but over the time it, it got out of control. And my process was to first uh, add another CSS library called Tachyons, but the, the, the principles are very similar. And first I wanted to stop writing CSS and start doing more and more with utilities. Uh, so it's definitely possible. Tailwind has a couple uh, of uh, tools to, to provide better ergonomics for this. First of all, you can have an important key in your theme that will add importance to every utility. So you turn your composable low specificity utilities into these absolute hammers that if you go BG red 200, there's no questions asked un unless you have inline styles in the, the HTML. It will okay. make the thing BG red. So you can turn all the utilities to have an importance and that's a very aggressive way to make sure they win. And then mm -hmm. it's, it sorts you out. And then you have some issues where it's quite common for someone to have a text center uh, utility classes. When you write your own CSS, you probably have like some uh, bootstrap does it. Everyone builds their own go-to helpers and then the name can clash. So Tailwind also lets you have a prefix. Uh, so if you go, you want to prefix uh, every utility with TW for Tailwind dash blue uh, background blue 200. 
then you have to manually type TW in front of every single utility you apply, but that, that prevents you from having collisions in terms of naming conventions. So mm -hmm. between the mm -hmm. important flag and the prefixes, you can go and sprinkle utilities with, on top of an existing code base. Okay, cool. Perfect, perfect answer. And as I said, I'm, I'm excited to dive in more and explore it more on my own projects and then maybe roll it into some bigger code base as I work on some bigger projects. So thanks for showing me around and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming. That was really, really interesting. And I always enjoy seeing this perspective from a newcomer. Like it opens our eyes on a lot of things that we take for granted. Perfect. Thanks, again. thanks Simon. See you soon. Bye.